what's good youtube antayami here and i'm back with another video on deck building terms now the reason why i wanted to make this video is because i kind of want to demonstrate or kind of show what role your cards have in certain decks every deck obviously has different roles but i'm gonna go over 10 terms and i'm gonna sh demonstrate with the sky striker outlitch deck um, again, every deck is different because this is more of a control deck. Um, there's combo decks and there's like tempo decks, you know, etc. etc. But we're gonna demonstrate um, all 10 terms in this deck, and um, there's gonna be some cards that don't identify any of these um, titles. But I'll try my best to demonstrate in other cards so you guys can have an understanding, and hopefully, this helps you more or less identify or how to like give you a better idea or understanding how to function and how to build your decks or even if you're going through like say like say for example if you're opening packs and you're opening a card and you look at a card you can identify oh it's a starter or oh this is an extender you know or you know blah 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 but without further ado let's hop in all right so here we are I have my Sky Striker Eldritch deck here, kind of like mixed around here. So let's go through the list and we're going to start with, I think you pretty much heard this term before and I'm pretty sure a lot of people have heard this term before. It's called starters, right? So what are starters? Um, starters are cards that you will love to see in your opening hand. It is kind of like your bread and butter on how to get into your engine. So for example, let's just go over a couple examples, right? If you guys haven't seen this deck profile, I do recommend you guys check it out. Um, I'll leave a little description up at the top. You guys can click on it and you guys can see the entire deck profile before I kind of like break down um, the different roles of every card in this deck. So without further ado. Um, so in this deck, I have a total of 12 starters. And again, by the end of this video, I want you guys to kind of like go through your decks and I want you guys to identify like the roles of the cards, right? And I'm gonna explain why these are starters. So um, obviously when you open up Ray, Ray gets you access into your Sky Striker engine, right? So um, all your Sky Striker cards become way more powerful. Um, she's pretty much a pseudo boss monster too, which is another term that I'm gonna get into later on. But right now, we're looking at her as a starter card. She's an excellent card to start with. The best normal summon of the deck. Pretty much the only normal summon of the deck. Um, it gets into your engine cards. So starter cards are basically how to get into your engine cards. Which, again, um, we'll talk about that. Uh, engage gets into a starter card. So this is a starter because this it's a starter that gets into another starter. So it's kind of like you have like four copies of Ray. Same thing with uh, reinforcements of the army. And the cool thing about Engage that's like really cool. This card searches every Sky Striker card in the deck. So so if you have Sky Striker Ray and Engage, then Engage can search for something else. Well, reinforcements of the army can only search out the Ray. Uh, so basically, you're looking at five copies of Ray here. Um, and then we have another card here called Hornet Drones, which is basically another Ray starter. So this is basically six ways to get into Ray here. Um, and since this deck is split into two engines, it's split into the Eldritch engine, and it's also split into the uh, Sky Striker engine. This is like all the starters for the Sky Striker stuff. So you, we have six Sky Striker starters that you will love to see in the opening hand. And then you have essentially six Eldritch starters. Um, of course, the actual Eldritch Golden Lord card, it's not really a starter um, because he doesn't do really too much in your starting hand. You don't really want to see him. Most likely you want to search him off with um, Eltlin and you can combo off from there. But yeah, from your six uh, Eldritch cards, these are your starters because this is how you get into your engine. If you open up with Sanguine, you can set the Sanguine. It gets into your Lord and basically from there, you can banish this card from the graveyard and it gets into your um, your actual um, golden land extenders or engine. And this card right here is a good starter because you can search your other golden lord cards or, you know, 
to actually go to Lord himself and you can actually perform really good combos. So these right here will be considered your starter cards. Cards that you always want to see in your starting hand. And again, cards have multiple roles, so you'll see more of that in the future. All right, so spot number two, this is called engine. All right, engine or the core of your deck. And yes, we have a really fat core here. Like, extremely fat, juicy core. So basically, core is how your deck is gonna maintain after turn one, basically, right? That's pretty much your core. Um, or if you're a combo deck, your core will be things you're gonna spit out on turn one. Like if you're normal summoning your starter, your starter will get something into your core, and then your core can um, act as like extenders or combo pieces and you know going from there but this will be considered your core because we're playing sky striker eldritch right so we're playing with two cores or two engines and this is basically it so your engine of cores are cars that basically have the name right so this is a golden land you know golden lord golden land um you got your sky striker stuff here you know, you got your Sanguine that's also connected to your, um, you know, your Golden Lord engine, also Golden Lord engine, and this is the rest of like the Sky Striker engine. So this is basically your core. This is the meat and potatoes of your deck. This is kind of like how you get into your win conditions, how you control the tempo. This is basically what your opponent is going to side into to counteract, right? Because this is the big chunk meat and potatoes of your deck, right? So this is what your opponent is going to side into. Uh, also probably hurting the starters as well to kind of stop what you're doing so this is your core so uh again take this um knowledge with your decks as well so if you're playing a hero deck obviously anything that has like hero in the name is a core card right um same thing with tribegate right so if you think about like tribegate anything that has to do with tribegates is considered your core so not much to say about that but yes sir that's your core I remember before I said I was going to talk about 10 different names here. Uh, I'm actually going to combine these two because I feel like it makes more sense to combine them, right? So this is kind of like your staples or aka I like to call them my flex spots. I don't know why I was going to like separate them, but uh, this is considered your flex spots, right? Your staples. Cards that doesn't really have like names for your engines. Cards that you really can't search right there's some cards you could probably search but um, as far as you know staples there are like cards that are really powerful and they can be splashed in many different strategies um, and the your best goal is to find staple cards that really work really well in your deck right so these consider um, kind of like the staples correct right so um in perms um these are considered hand traps as well which is another thing we're going to talk about and i guess you know what let's just go ahead and combine it right so uh we're going to combine hand traps and staples here because hand, <laughs> hand traps are basically staples so um impermanence is really good because obviously it's a card that you can interact with your opponent on the first turn because this deck doesn't really have many cards that interrupts their plays but it has a lot of board breaking potential which is really good um, as you can see with droplets uh, harpy's feather duster is a really cool one of because there's some decks that just set back row it's a really good way to just kind of sweep them uh, solemn strike is a really good staple because um i mean it's just <laughs> really good going first like one of the best traps in the game um and then of course the rest of these i'm not gonna go over all of them but um these are cards that can be interchanged, right? So you could probably look at somebody else's deck profile. You might see their core, well, maybe, you know, they are probably playing a, a two of instead of a three of, but, you know, that's all based on your perspective on your core. But when it comes to staples, you may see like something weird, like maybe only two strikes or maybe no call by the grave or it's interchangeable. Like people have different ways. Some people don't even play droplets. Some people probably play chalice. Some people probably play, probably play uh, Dark Ruler no more. Just all depends on the player, right? So these are considered your flex box because these are the first things you kind of look at when um, changing up your strategy 
maybe um formats can alter these cards like maybe let's say for example everybody's playing back row right let's just say like the top three decks are all back row decks well drop list is something that's not really strong versus back row decks so you'll probably like take these out and put in like i don't know cosmic cyclones because that's a good staple card right so you know lightning storms etc etc you guys get the point all right so that's what i would say about um staples slash flex spots cards that can just be easily swapped around depending on the meta and what you're really trying to counter for this one we're gonna leave these as boss monsters now every deck technically has a boss monster um i guess you can kind of like argue like something like like alter guys or whatever doesn't really have a boss monster but uh i would consider their boss monster the um the link to hexia that comes out once you see hexia it's over <laughs> like it's pretty much a wrap so every deck per se technically has a boss i'm just pretty sure i'm some rogue crazy deck that doesn't really have it like tri brigade has shurik and i guess technically dry trons is the draco nids or i guess more importantly i guess dragoon would consider a boss there's decks that have multiple bosses right um you got perfection so you know those are considered boss monsters monsters that on the end board you want to have face up and they're just just have some really crazy protection effect probably have some like negate tied to it maybe some card that just sucks up a lot of advantage and gives you crazy follow-up so in this deck i only play five monsters and these monsters are considered boss monsters because again ray it's just one of those cards that literally just give me so much advantage it's crazy it's really insane you normal summon ray link off into a link monster link monster dies she comes back she's literally like a boss floater so um very cool for her on that and same thing with golden lord golden lord is also a card that like floats so basically he gets linked off on the board or gets destroyed he just comes right back and he gets like a special boost which makes him 3500 attack which is insane um and yeah you you really want him face up on the on the field and you really want ray in the graveyard it's kind of how they uh interact and when she hits the field she contributes herself for effect again to get more advantage and golden lord it's just a big beefy monster that basically procs um the golden land engine now this next thing i want to talk about is extenders now i don't really necessarily have extenders in this deck because it's just literally a back row deck like this deck literally plays 35 spells and traps so there's no really extenders um but i guess i can mention a couple of examples right so like dragon links is a really cool um deck to talk about when it comes to extenders because it's a really good combo deck so if you're playing dragon links right and let's say you normal summon safer right do i have safer out well okay uh, okay this is not sky strikers but i just happen to have this core just kind of sitting on the side right here so um a good extender in this deck would be considered Karaz, right? Because Karaz is not necessarily like a starter. He doesn't really get you any advantage. Kind of like um, Fractal, right? Because Fractal is a really good starter card because you can pitch him. Um, he can dump Kit, which dumps Nerval. Nerval will most likely search out Karaz. But if you like say for example if you normal summon let's say you normal summon fractal right and you activate his effect and you get veiled or something then you can use Karaz as an extended special summon and activate his effect so this is what we consider an extended cards that can keep making your deck push through a lot of interruption so that's that'll be a perfect example of um interruption sorry my deck is a trap deck so i don't really have cards like that so now there's a special term i like to call point 1.5 right i'm pretty sure you guys probably heard the term of 1.5 cards so let me kind of go through what that means right so i consider forbidden droplets as a 1.5 card because it's going it's good going first and going second but it's a better card going second um call by the grave is another 1.5 card because it's a card that um again it's really good going first not as strong going second but you can technically go second with it um so like decks like guru 
you know if they have the fiendus you can actually use call body grave as a better going second card versus that deck because it just does really well i would consider upstar as a 1.5 starter because uh it, it can help you see the next card and that card can technically lead you into a starter so again this card can literally draw you into any card in your in your deck which can lead you to a starter um terraforming is a technically a 1.5 starter because it the search leads to area zero which is another 1.5 starter um and i'm gonna go ahead and put multi-roll here because it also is a 1.5 starter uh, because like this technically can hit cards right so like there's a chance that this doesn't do anything but there's also a chance where it can right so you can hit your ray you know blah 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 and i consider multi-roll a 1.5 starter because again usually turn one it doesn't really do much but in combinations with like uh area zero or if you hit like this card then it can technically open itself up as a starter but not all the time so it's a 0.5 because or 1.5 because it can but not all the time right so uh solemn strike can also be considered as a 1.5 starter um nah, i mean it's definitely better going first but it can also just be a really good going second card because if your opponent has like a really big board or whatever you can set these and in combinations of like other cards and like say for example if like if i had torrental set let's pretend like this is a torrental and your opponent like has a monster that can negate like omni negate right but the rest of the cards are not so you can wait for your opponent to summon something activate torrental and then when they proc effect then you can solemn strike their monster and then destroy the entire board so pretty good just uh again i think solemn strike by itself it's not good because it can get you killed faster right and if your opponent has an already established board it can just go into battle phase and just bypass strike anyway so that that's what i'll say what a 1.5 card is uh that one's a more of a flexible thing right depending on what deck you're playing or how you are looking at the card um but you know there's some cards that are good going first or just have multiple purposes and they're not necessarily a starter but it can be at the same time so 1.5 starters can kind of like add to um your starter pool but not necessarily cards that you don't i mean you will love to see but not necessarily will get you out of a sticky situation by itself so 1.5 the last thing i want to talk about is interruptions now interruptions are cards and mostly um in most decks it can be cards from your extra deck but we're not going to talk about extra deck um in this video as you can tell i try to avoid talking about the extra deck but um yeah so let's just talk about cards that are considered interruptions um cards that you can play on your opponent's turn that hurts their plays right so for example solemn strikes are interruption cards uh none of these are interruptions call by the graves interruption droplets are interruptions this is interruption um these are like kind of like 1.5 interruptions again you got to have a setup for this um but these are interruptions um that can be an interruption these are interruptions uh those are interruptions yeah so these are your main deck interruptions here right all these cards so these are the cards that you kind of want to end up on so your opponent has to play through these and if you can stop your opponent from doing whatever they need to do then you can pretty much kill them on the next turn so basically these are your um your interrupters right so yeah all right guys well that's gonna be it for today's video i hope you guys maybe learned something or maybe picked up a really cool term now you can go into your decks and just do this if you have like three or four decks go through your decks and sort them out um as like starters or interrupters or 1.5 starters uh, flex spots your staples um things of that nature your floodgates uh did i even talk about floodgates i did not talk about floodgates i'm sorry one more thing before we end um which is floodgates now this deck doesn't necessarily have any floodgates but let me see if i can take out my book here and we can talk about floodgates i almost forgot 
So, uh, let's see here. We can find the floodgate page, right? So, um, floodgates are cards that are basically like they they can either have a lingering effect or they can um be face up on the field. They usually are like continuous traps or spells, like Rivalry of the Warlords, right? This card right here can basically uh, be considered as a floodgate because it stops your opponent for doing certain actions, right? Same thing like anti-spell here. Anti-spell is another good, I don't know why I can't get this card on the, on the screen. Yeah, just take it out. It's another good card considered as a floodgate because it prevents your opponent from doing certain actions, um, things of that nature. I don't think I have any more floodgates up in here. Uh, I might have to turn to a different page. Uh, Mystic Mine is another card that's really good for being a floodgate and do i have up oh, here this mystic mine right here so everybody knows this card everybody loves this card am i right so i used to have mixed in mine in this deck i think i had it over my harpies but i mean i don't know i just felt like i didn't really use it as much as i thought and uh i didn't really want to rely on this card because it's, it's like it can be a cheap card um of course but yeah um those are floodgates so forgot to mention that but anyway guys thank you guys for watching if you guys learn anything please let me know um and there's probably more terms i could have went over but i think these are like the nice general ones that you guys can go over with yourself like i said go through your deck and figure out what uh, are starters 1.5 extenders you know stuff like that just whatever and hopefully this will get your brain turning for like looking at certain cards um also you can also apply this knowledge when in a duel if you're going against your opponent you can see what are starters what are interrupters what, what are extenders things of that nature but anyway guys thank you guys for watching if you guys made it this far i do appreciate you and i'll catch you guys in the next video peace